Okay, at this point, if all of you managed to reach at this point, we're going to wrap up some talk or some all the corners or all the issues about the free net frame. Okay, hi. Once um Okay, hi. At this point, we're just going to wrap up our discussion about the free net frame and the free net equations. Now, I really like all these things, all these equations, and I must say that I should really take some time to really give order if you could use that to the mathematician that really did all this work. Now, when you study Euler or say Gaussian or say Newton, you know all the formulas that because the formulas are named after them. But one man responsible for all the work on vectors is a guy called Oliver Heaviside. I believe it's 1850 to 1925, a telephone engineer. And in his publish or in his work called Electromagnetism Theory, it was where he used vectors a lot. Now, at that time, there were what we call quaternions and vectors. So one of the reasons why as high school students or as university students, many of you don't know what, what a quaternion is, is because he was the one that popularized the use of vectors as well as did a lot of work on it. Okay, so much thanks goes to him. So now, at this point of the section about the free net frame, we, we left off last lesson about the free net equations where we had the first derivatives of the unit tangent, the unit normal, and the unit binormal, okay, where we written that in terms of what we like to say kappa and torsion. And we also discussed what kappa geometrically means and what torsion geometrically means. So now using all the knowledge we have, we're gonna prove what we call on the big theorem, okay, I'm not sure whether it's big or not, but it's the fundamental theorem of space curves, okay? Much like how we had the fundamental theorem of calculus and the fundamental theorem of algebra. Now, the fundamental theorem of space curves says that when we have two curves, okay, in three-dimensional space, though we, we don't know what they are, or though we don't know that they are the same, okay, let's just say C1, C2, two curves would be the same, okay, as in we, they are congruent, meaning to say we can rigidly transpose one of them to the other such that they fit line in line if the value of kappa and the value of torsion are equal. That's what the fundamental theorem of space curve says. Quite a, a nice and quite a really a general theorem because we can use that to prove a lot of results. Okay? That if is kappa and torsion are equal. Now, that would imply okay, that a curve could be described using the values of kappa and torsion. Or it seems that way for now. Does it make sense? If two curves are equal, or if two curves are congruent, sorry, my mistake, if they're not equal, because they could be lying in a different part of the space, but they are congruent, okay, if the values of kappa and uh, torsion are equal, okay, that would also mean that, or it would imply that the kappa and torsion would describe the curve. So, that is what we want to prove, and this is how we're going to go about doing it, okay? Fundamental theorem of space curves. Okay, like always, we always um, use a certain function, okay? Now, I must say that the work of the mathematicians that did this are really smart because they didn't know what function to use. Likewise, you don't know, or at least I don't know how I'm going to use this function. But let's just say that we have a function like this, okay? Function, okay, S, in terms of the arc length, is equal to the unit tangent, okay? We call it unit tangent 1 dots with unit tangent 2, Okay, add up with the unit normal one dot with the unit normal two, okay, and add up with the unit binomial one dot with the unit binomial two. Okay, a lot of vectors here. Now, as you have guessed it, the, the vectors T1, N1, and B1 describes the curve C1 over here. Okay, so um, this is not proper um, notation, but just bear with me. I mean, let's just write it this way. N, M1, and B1, okay? So C1 is described this way, and C2 is described this way. Okay, N2 and B2. Okay, now that is what we have, okay? And this is how we are going to go about proving it. Now, 
Honestly, I don't know how, how we got this function, but you will see why in a minute. Okay, now we're gonna differentiate this function. So just think this function as a function f written in terms of the arc length because all these vectors are terms, written in terms of the arc length. And now what we can do is that we can differentiate this, what we have over here, okay? And that would be first derivative of function s, okay? And we will have to use the results for the free net Serre equations, am I not wrong? Now, there's a lot, but I would really like to, to take the honor, okay? I would like to take the honor of really trying to differentiate this small stuff equation, so I hope you join, uh, you go along with me, okay? I know it's gonna take a while, but let's just see whether we can work that out together because I believe I want this proof to be as rigorous as need be, okay? I'll, I'm always gonna differentiate the first one, okay? and keep the second one and add up and dot them together of course okay and then keep the first one and then differentiate the second one okay now that's the sequence that we're gonna have okay so okay that's the first one or that's for the t followed by the n okay so sorry okay differentiate um, my mistake okay okay let's not do that again okay correct me okay so differentiate keep keep differentiate so next one is differentiate keep Okay, then you add up with keep and then differentiate and then like always dot them together. Okay, things are already looking a bit messy but it's out of perseverance that we can really prove the formula. Okay, differentiate, keep, sorry this is 2, okay, add up with keep and then dot and then differentiate, okay. Yeah, okay, that looks fine so far. Okay, now, what we're gonna do is that for the, the, the vectors t, n, and b that are being differentiated, we're gonna substitute from using the free net equations, okay? Now, I didn't write them there. I hope that you can memorize them, okay? So, the first derivative of torsion, okay? Uh, okay, now, I, I better write that, okay? We normal, we know normal, sorry, binomial, okay? Then the first derivative of torsion, if I can refer it to here, is kappa, okay, and n, okay, so I'll dot that with t, so this will be 1, this will be 2 over here, okay, then I add up with following suit, but this time it'll just be kappa, okay, and n2, okay, wow, okay, now the next one, the more difficult one, because now we need the first derivative of the normal, which is minus kappa, the, the unit tangent, okay, and then after that we are going to add up with torsion and the unit binomial, okay, and then to make some matters worse, we're gonna open a bracket and we're gonna dot that with n2, okay, now following suit, dot with this time it will just simply be the second vector, okay? Kappa T2S plus torsion B1 in terms of S, okay? There we go, okay? Now the last line is the binomial one, at least that wouldn't be too messy, okay? So first derivative of binomial which we've shown is minus torsion unit normal 1, okay? Dot that with binomial 2, okay, and then we add that up with the, keeping the first binomial 1, unit binomial, and then we dot that with minus torsion, okay, and n2, unit normal 2. Okay, now if I've been using the, the free net set equations correctly, okay, that is what I should have, which I hope I have been using them correctly. 